truly we, we, we look outside amen and we come in and we know it's raining and it's, and it's yucky outside but praise God the weather's just fine in here amen praise God uh, I pray that if it rains today amen I pray that it rain in here through the power of the Holy Ghost amen I pray that it come down in a great mighty way today touch hearts change lives amen and I pray uh, and, and I just want to mention this amen if we want that to happen guess what it starts with us Amen. It starts with us. It starts with our uh, our ability, our, our 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 notion to say, Lord, I'm nothing, but I need you today. I need you to show up, and show out, change me, change us, Lord, change change everything today, Lord God. We just want you. We want your presence in this place. <clears throat> So we just welcome him in this morning, amen. And so in that welcome this morning, we want to start with our our, uh, our notifications, amen, our, our uh, announcements this morning that we want to get with. Don't forget, next weekend, it's hard to believe that March is over. Uh, just kiss March goodbye because it's done, praise God. We're getting into Easter, uh, and that's what we're talking about today. We're going to be talking about Palm Sunday and, and the Passover, and, and so thankful to have our guest with us this morning, Pastor Robert Ritchie from the Olive Tree Messianic Fellowship Church. Uh, and so as we look at this, we see... April the 3rd, amen. Uh, next Saturday from 12 to 2, we're doing our Easter drive through uh, Make sure that you, those that have signed up, make sure that you still communicate. Be here with us that day. Uh, we're going to meet early that morning. Um, we'll send the text out. Thank you, Sister Kim. Uh, what? Is there anything you need to say? Okay. Uh, so apparently the text has already been sent out. I didn't get the text because I'm not on it, amen. So that's why I didn't know. What? She sent the text from my phone. <laughs> That's what happened. So, anyway, I will carry on. Uh, Easter bags will be provided to all kids, amen, and to the teens. Uh, so make sure and be here. Tell somebody, invite people, amen. Make sure that they come out. Let them know that we're doing this. We had a great turnout last year uh, and looking for another great time this, this coming Saturday as well. Then, of course, Sunday, amen, April the 4th, our sunrise service. Uh, and I do know that that did go out. I did see that, amen, so we're good with that. Uh, 7 o'clock this, this coming Sunday morning, amen, we're going to do our sunrise service at the pavilion, Lord willing, if nothing don't change and the creek don't get any higher, amen. Amen. This is where we're going to meet at. And so we're going to be there for the word, for some singing, for some worship, devotion. Amen. And we're going to be there to see the sunrise that morning. Amen. Uh, in, in, in true honor, amen, of Christ being resurrected. Praise God. Uh, then we'll come up here at 1045. There'll be no Sunday school that morning, next Sunday. Uh, we're just going to meet here at 1045, get right into worship and singing and worship and praising God that morning. Amen. Praise God. Kids Easter celebration is also going to be on, on that Sunday on the 4th during regular service. The kids are going to have an Easter celebration during children's church. So make sure, again, get somebody, invite somebody, get them to come in, amen, and, and be ready to worship and praise God. Amen. Praise God. Graduation service, again. <clears throat> Let me hold this one together. I got a tear that's trying to form. Praise God. Uh, graduation service, May the 2nd here at the church. We're going to be honoring our three high school graduates on this day. Uh, we're going to have a cookout following the morning service. Come and celebrate our graduates with us. And they are Megan Barnett, Hannah Carroll, and Brian Ogle. Uh, so so make, make plans for that to stay around after Sunday morning service to help celebrate. Amen. With our family. Praise God. Uh, and, and, and send them off. Amen. And just bless them and, 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 and just pour into them. Praise God. All that we can. Hmm. Does anybody know about this date? Amen. If, if not, amen, you need to make sure that you do. Amen. If your mother is still here with you, make sure you know, let her know that she is special, praise God, on May the 9th. And hopefully you're doing that 365 days a year. Amen. I've, I've, you know, you learn those things, praise God. And sometimes you learn them through faults of your own actions. But, amen, we got to repent and carry on, right? Amen. So, uh, but make that day special for your mother. Amen. So, praise God. We got any more announcements? Is that it? Praise God. All right. Stand with us this morning. With two more announcements, Sister Kathy will be taking the kids down for Children's Church today. Uh, and she did tell me she's got a great surprise for them, so I'm super excited for what she's going to be teaching them today. And then also right after service this morning, Sister Kim does need to meet with all of the ladies just immediately following the service. Amen. So praise God. Who's ready to worship this morning? Amen. Amen. Who's ready to praise God? Amen. To, to, to get in, praise God, and see what God's got for us. Well, we're going to start with prayer. The most important thing to do before we ever begin to pray is what? we got to believe. Once we believe, we expect it, then according to the Word of God, we shall receive. Amen. That's biblical, foundational truth. Amen. Right there. The Bible tells us that we have power, that we have authority, that we can approach the throne of God with grace and boldness. Amen. We can make our petitions and our requests known unto Him. 
Amen. So that's what I want us to do this morning as we pray. Pray for our worship service. Pray for our praise warriors, our musicians. Amen. Pray one for another because I don't want you to be spectators. Amen. I want you to be participators in the worship. I want you to take what you need. Amen. I want you to take the throne of God. Amen. And, and, and just pour out your heart to, uh, to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords this morning. Amen. And seek His face. Praise God. Why would we do that? Because we got family members that are lost and dying and going to hell. Amen. Praise God. We, we, we got family members that are steeped in sin. Amen. That, that we need the bondages of sin to be broken and pulled off of their lives. Amen. So that they can see the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We got a community. We got, we got uh, this whole community. Amen. That people are lost and going to hell. Amen. And we need to be breaking those chains of bondages. Again, it starts with us. Amen. It starts with me. It starts with each and every one of us. Amen. So, so let's go to God in prayer and pray for these things this morning. Our most kind and gracious, precious Heavenly Father. God, again, we just want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for this wonderful time and this wonderful, wonderful opportunity that you've given us to be in the house of God this morning. Father, I pray now for our worship. I pray that, Lord God, that you will bless and anoint our praise warriors, our musicians. God, our, our congregation, Lord God, as we begin to join in uh, with, with, with the body, with an agreement, Lord God, in Jesus' name, to, to, to approach the throne of God with boldness and make our requests and petitions known. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over our family and friends. We pray that the strongholds of the enemy shall be broken and destroyed in Jesus' name. We pray that those that are burdened, those that are, those that are hurting will come into the house of God this morning. Lord God, that they will find rest in you, that they will find hope in the cross, that they will find hope in the power of Jesus' name this morning, Father, because we know that you are alive and well. We know that you are seated at the right hand of God the Father making intercession. We know that you're on the move. We know that you've come to save and to set free and deliver. And Lord, and we just surrender this day to you. We surrender these people to you. We, we surrender the service to you, Father, this morning. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for it all. Bless those that can give this morning. Bless those, Father God. Bless this offering that we shall take up, Lord. God, bless it. Let it be multiplied, Lord God, and, and, and take care of everything that you need it to do for the kingdom, Father. Today, again, we give you that praise and honor and glory for it all. For it's these things we ask in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen and amen. If you've got your tithes and offerings, amen, bring them up. Drop them on the communion table here in these plates, amen, as a part of your worship this morning. Let's give God glory today. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's all over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost it's all over me. When well, I have royal blood flowing through my veins, I'm a child of the King. I've been buried in His name. There is no devil that can come against me. I've been blessed. I've been sorrows and pains. I deserve better. I won't go another day. I'm here to claim deliverance in Jesus' name. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's all over me. Oh, yeah. The joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's all over me. Well, I have royal blood flowing through my veins. I'm a child of the King. I've been buried in His name. There is 
no devil that can come against me. I've been blessed, I've been bought, I've been set free. Fresh on me, I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Oh, yes, I feel, I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I have been loose, I've been set free, so pardon me a moment while I have a jubilee, the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. I've been loose, I've been set free, so pardon me a moment while I have a jubilee, the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. The joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's all over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We exalt your name in this place, oh God. Can you feel the joy this morning in the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Now I have royal blood flowing through my veins. I'm a child of the King. I've been buried in his name. There is no devil that can come against me. I've been blessed. I've been born. I've been set free. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's all over me. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Turning lives 
How he 
raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. church just stay right here in this worship uh, just for a moment God is good just meditate on him just meditate on the goodness of God oh we worship you Jesus we bless your name this morning Lord oh you've been so good how many people's been set free this morning how many people's been saved praise God sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost amen praise God let's worship him just for another moment how many people believe that truly, amen, that God is a way maker? That God, amen, is, 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 is my peace in a troubled storm, amen. He's my hope, amen, when there is no hope. He's my, he's my joy and my strength, amen. He is everything that I need Him to be because that's who He is. That's who He is, amen. Oh, we just worship you, Jesus. We bless your name this morning, Jesus. It makes me You're holy. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you this morning, Lord, Jesus. We bless your name glory. this morning, Jesus. It's all the honor yes, Lord. and all yes, the praise. Lord. to follow the leadership of the Lord and we're going to we're going to take a we're going to take a time out for just a second and we're going to go back to Waymaker somebody in here this morning needs to know that he's a Waymaker amen I don't know what you're going through I don't know what you're battling I just continue to hear that over and over and over and over again in my spirit that that I am a Waymaker amen and we just got to let go and let God and let him amen do what he wants to do Amen. Just follow the leadership of the Lord. And if you're here this morning, amen, and you say, you know what? Hey, that's me. I'm going through something. I don't know. I'm having a hard time in trusting God or, or doing this or doing that. I'm telling you, he said, I want to show you that I am your way maker. Amen. amen. I'm going to lead you through the waters. I'm going to, uh, 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 you're going to come through it. Amen. You're not going to be drowned by it. I'm going to, I'm going to lead you through the fire and you're not even going to smell like smoke. You're going to go through some things, but I'm going to show you that with me all things are possible to them that believe now my question is if you've got a need this morning that if somebody says you know what I got a need I got a need that only he can supply I promise you if you you'll step out in faith I believe mm. Jesus I 
believe that with everything that is within me, that I know that He is a way maker. He wants to touch hearts. He wants to do something this morning. Yes, I know we've got an agenda this morning. And I know that Pastor Robert, uh, Pastor Richie is going to come this morning. And that's fine. We're going to get to him in a minute. But right now, we've got an agenda with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he wants to move and touch hearts and change lives. And if that's you, as we sing this song, do not, I repeat, do not stay where you are. Get out of your seat. Find a place in this altar. Let's pray for you. Let's anoint you with oil. And believe what the Spirit and the Word of God wants to do in your life. The choice is up to you. The choice is up to you and how you want to receive or what you want to do and how you want to be used of God this morning. Let's worship with Him. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. It's your up, we maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We maker, we maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And you're a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Waymaker, yes. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, you're Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, we make her guess. We make her miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you're we make it, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make it, miracle worker. Work. 
keeper, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing that out with a say. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you're a way make miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see your working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. <laughs> Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop 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 working. You never stop that promise keeper Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh we worship you we give you glory we give you praise and we give you honor this morning oh we thank you Jesus oh we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus oh to God be the glory church oh we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I'm thankful to report this morning that he's not dead. Amen. I'm thankful to report this morning, amen, that he is not dead, Brother Nick. Praise God. And I'm going to go back to what I mentioned a couple of, a couple of Sundays ago, amen, uh, talking about the church, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, amen, that there's three things, that, or there was several things that I talked about that that the church was, what the church is. And then there was three things that I specifically pointed out that the church is not. And God is bringing that to fruition. The church is not dead, the church is not dying, and the church ain't done. Amen? And that's what we got to understand. And that's what we got to know beyond the shadow of a doubt. Amen? Why do I know that? Because we are the church. We are the body of Christ, amen. We are His. We are bought and paid for with the precious blood, praise God, of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we, as we focus our hearts and our minds, as we enter in to this service this morning of, of Palm Sunday and Passover, and that's why uh, Pastor Richie's here this morning. He's going he's to bring light to this this morning. He's going to expound on the goodness of God, amen, and, and what God has done and, and, and everything and how all this comes together. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit has just set the stage and, and He's opened up our hearts and our minds to receive and, and to hear the Word of God and, and let it be rooted and grounded and let it bring forth much fruit this morning. Amen, because that's my prayer this morning. That, as, that as, he, as He comes this morning, amen, that as He breaks open the bread of life upon us, amen, that, that the words that He speaks will fall upon good ground. 
And then that seed that's planted will begin to bring forth fruit unto a bountiful harvest of personal gain. No, of kingdom gain. Remember, it's our purpose to advance the kingdom. Amen. It's not our personal agendas, but it's the kingdom. To be kingdom minded. This is what we're about today, man. So praise God. I just want to give God, just give God praise one more time. Just give God a hand clap of praise and worship this morning. Oh, we give you glory, God. We give you glory. Thank you, praise warriors. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Pastor Richie, if you will make your way this way, sir. Uh, praise God. <clears throat> I want to turn the service over to Pastor Richie, amen, this morning, praise God. Uh, as he comes, amen, make him welcome this morning, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Give God glory. Thank you, Jesus. First, I want to uh, thank you all for having me here this morning. Uh, I believe this is my third time now here at Hiawassee Church of God. I always enjoy my time here. I believe I've been here once for uh, uh, Hanukkah and twice for Passover now. Now, what Pastor Carol is giving you is a booklet that we will be going through. Uh, most of my words that I say today will be directly from this booklet. Of course, I'm led by the Spirit of God, so I'm liable to get off my notes some, uh, and that's okay. The Holy Spirit has uh, the right to do that. Amen. The other thing you are receiving is a plate. That is called a Seder plate. Most of the time when you celebrate the Passover, you have the Seder plate and you have this booklet. You have... Uh, food items on that Seder plate that you go through. Now, I want to say this before I get started. Aren't you glad this morning that our God is a way maker? And that's what this Passover is all about. God made a way to deliver his people from slavery. And he has made a way to deliver each and every one of us from the slavery to sin through the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, I'm not here this morning to teach you about something that I do. I'm here to teach you this morning about... Do, do you need more? Grab them. Yes. Yep, that's why I brought them. Those of you who need extra, you get a larger one. Uh, so uh, don't, you, don't feel left out. You actually get the larger, better plates. Again, I'm not here this morning to teach you about something that I do and my church does. I'm here this morning to teach you about your Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what He did for us. I'm here to teach you this morning about the communion and where that came from, where that started. You know, we're here this morning celebrating... Palm Sunday. But Palm Sunday has a lot of deeper significance to it rather than what just occurred on that day that Jesus rode in on the donkey before he was crucified. It actually goes all the way back to a verse we're going to read here later. I don't know if you guys... Uh, uh, in, in the sound booth, pull up Bible verses or not. But here later, not at the moment, you can go ahead and be finding this. Here later we are going to read Exodus 12, 3 through 15. Exodus 12, 3 through 15. You can go ahead and be turning and finding that. Now I'm going to reference to you a lot of other scriptures, but it's all in the booklet that you have in front of you, okay? Our God made a way. I'm just going to dwell on that for a moment before I even get to this. Uh, and then I'm going to come back to Palm Sunday. But all those sacrifices in 
the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Scriptures, what I would call, what uh, my church would call the Tanakh. Uh, all those sacrifices pointed to Jesus. Let me give you a, a good example of what those sacrifices did. How many of you have a credit card? Okay. Every time you go purchase something with that credit card, there's still a bill coming. You've got what you purchased, but there's still a bill coming. Every time they would uh, make those sacrifices for the forgiveness of sin or whatever, they got those, that forgiveness, but there was still that bill that needed to be paid, that credit card. And Jesus came and paid the credit card bill. Amen? That's a good way to explain the sacrifices and what uh, Jesus did for us. But going back to Palm Sunday... In Exodus 12, that we're going to read in a moment, on the 10th day of the Hebrew month of Nisan, all the Israelites were to bring in a lamb into the home and keep it for four days in the home. Get to know this lamb. Get to love this lamb. And then they sacrificed it four days later. It was on the 10th day of Nisan that Jesus rode in on the donkey into Jerusalem. So this, what we're celebrating today is Palm Sunday has really been celebrated since Exodus 12 when they would bring in that lamb. And just as they got to know the lamb, they got to know Jesus as well during those four days as he taught them and as he ministered to them. And some got to love him who didn't even know him during those four days. And then he was crucified on the 14th day of the Hebrew month of Nisan. Now, maybe some of you might be wondering, why the difference in Passover? Why does it change on, on the calendar every year? Well, let me explain that real fast. First of all, we started celebrating Passover last night at my congregation. Uh, this is my second of three Passover Celebrations within a 24-hour period. Uh, I, I told uh, Pastor Carol earlier, I'm starting to feel it a little bit, and I'll, I'll really start to feel it this evening when I go to the third one. But praise God, we got the Holy Ghost to push us on. Amen? Uh, why is there a difference between... Why does Passover change? I'm sorry. Why does Passover move? Some years it's on a Monday, Tuesday, some years Friday, Saturday... It's because the biblical calendar, the Hebrew Jewish calendar, is based on the lunar cycle, okay? Where our calendar is based on the sun, the solar. Every, what, four years, we have to have a leap year, and we add one day, right? Our months range anywhere from 30, 31 days, except for February's 28th. Well, the Hebrew calendar, again, is based on the moon. So every new moon is the first day of the month on the Hebrew calendar. Well, if you watch that cycle, it's every 28 or 29 days there's a new moon. So every 28 or 29 days is a start of another month on the Jewish calendar. So you see how they get behind, right? You see how it, it, how it, uh, it, it changes. So on a leap year, on the Jewish calendar, they have to have a whole extra month. And it's always in February. I'm not a big fan of February. It's always just wet and cold. Uh, imagine having two Februaries. Uh, not a big fan of that. But it gets us back on uh, the, the right track. And Easter always falls. Okay, Passover is always on the 15th day of Nisan. It's always a full moon on Passover. Easter always falls the first Sunday after that full moon. Now, sometimes they coincide perfectly but sometimes they're just a few days off okay let us pray before i get started father we just thank you again i thank you for this opportunity to stand here and minister to your people uh, i pray that you fill me afresh with your holy spirit and fire uh, fill me full of your words not my own in jesus name we pray amen Okay, first of all, a few definitions you have here on your booklet. That booklet you have in front of you is called a Haggadah. Haggadah is the Hebrew word for telling. It means the telling of the Passover story. 
The word Seder, which is what we have at the start of Passover, which is that plate you have in front of you, a Seder plate. Seder is a Hebrew word that means arrangement. There's a certain arrangement you have on that plate or order or structure. And again, it refers to the order of the Passover service or Seder. The name Yeshua is Hebrew for Jesus. And you'll hear me say Yeshua probably 99% of the time throughout. I'm just, that's just how I say it. I'm used to saying it uh, that way. But it's the same as Jesus. Yeshua is Jesus. Jesus is Yeshua. The leader of the Seder. It is tradition that the leader of the Seder wear white clothing. That's why I have a white shirt on today and a white yarmulke in Yiddish or Hebrew in uh, kippa in Hebrew. Uh, Yiddish is kind of a mixture between uh, Hebrew and German, if you don't know what that is. Uh, kind of like we have redneck English. <clears throat> uh, they have Yiddish. Uh, they were German, but they were Jewish, so they mixed in some Hebrew in there with it. They called it Yiddish. Many wear a white robe, many of those who are leading the Seder wear a white robe called a kittel. It looks a lot like a uh, doctor's robe. I've worn that a few times at a few Seders, but I didn't want you calling me Dr. Ritchie here today, so I didn't wear it today. Uh, the leader in the Seder is playing the role of the temple priesthood. Just like the priest wore special clothing when ministering in the temple, the leader of the Seder likewise wears special clothing. The priest had to wear the linen garments. You remember that? Peter spoke of believers, of, of Christians, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You see that there on your booklet saying, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. He's referring to us. So we are a priesthood as well. So we have every right to dress in the uh, linen white clothing as we lead the Passover Seder. And by the way, the TLV, that is, stands for the Tree of Life version. It's a uh, kind of a Messianic Jewish version that I have in front of my hand here that uh, has Yeshua in it, Adonai for Lord, and so on and so on. has a lot of the Hebrew words, in other words. Okay, now I want to say a prayer for putting on this. This is a tallit, or a prayer shawl. It actually has the Hebrew prayer on the collar right there. The way if you don't have a booklet or you can't remember it, you could just turn it right around and read it right to yourself as you put it on. Uh, the biblical thing about this is these four tassels. In Hebrew, they're called zitzit. You have uh, knots on here, little tiny knots. 613 on here, which represents the 613 commandments that they have kept in the first five books of Moses. These tassels was to remind the Israelites of God's word and to obey it and keep it. How many of you wear a cross or a star of David like I have on? It reminds you of who you are, how you're supposed to act. Well, that's what these are. Now, in ancient biblical times, the shirts would be made out of four corners. It says to put this on the four corners of your garments. So they would have these on every one of their garments that they wore. Well, now today our clothing's not made of four corners. It's rounded off. So we have prayer shawls that we put on and that we wear during time of prayer that has four corners and that has these zit zit on them. Uh, you know the story with the woman with the issue of blood where she reached out and grabbed the hem of Yeshua, of Jesus' garment? This is what she grabbed. She reached out and grabbed, remember, this reminds you of God's word. She reached out and grabbed the power of God's word. She believed, she had faith that she could just grab on to God's word. She would be healed, and she was. I'm not going to say every Hebrew blessing in this booklet for you guys tonight. I'm going to skip over some things, but I will say this one. This is one we say quite frequently at the olive tree, and it goes like this. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kirishanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu, lehitatet bat zitzi. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to wear garments with fringes. Amen. And that word sanctified there does not mean saved. 
Uh, I've had people ask me that. No, he did not save us with his commandments. Sanctified means he's made you different. He set you apart from the rest of the wor world. You are following his commandments. That's what that means. Next, at this point in time in the Seder, I, I wish we could have the whole table set up and have all of you guys sitting at a table with this plate in front of you and the food items in front of you, but that takes a lot of organization and, and a lot of work uh, put into it. But next, picture yourself sitting at that table. We would light the Passover candles. Why do we do that? Psalm 27, 1, again, this is from the Tree of Life version that you see on your booklet. It says, Adonai, Adonai means the Lord, referring to God. Adonai is my light and my salvation. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light shine before people. That's from the complete Jewish Bible. So every time we light the candles, every Friday night as we start the Sabbath, the Shabbat, every feast, what do you do when you start a celebration, a birthday party or something? What do you do? Do you light candles? So we light the candles to start the celebration, to start the party. And again, you have some blessings here uh, that we would traditionally say, but we are not going to do those at the moment. Then you come to the telling of the Passover story. And each year when we tell the Passover story, we always encourage the people to put yourself in that situation. Picture yourself back there. And even try to apply it today in your own life. Last year it was pretty easy to teach on the plagues and the pandemic. Uh, it, it was pretty easy uh, in, in that regard, but that's still fresh on our mind. Traditionally, there's four questions that is asked here. I wished I could have gotten the young man to come today that uh, sang these four questions in Hebrew. I think he's about 10 years old, and he beautifully sung these Hebrew questions and answers for about five minutes, all Hebrew, just sang it. It, it was so beautiful. But instead of going through those four questions, uh, normally the questions would go, I'll just briefly say this, normally the questions would go something like this. This night is different from all other nights. On all other nights we eat either leavened or unleavened bread. On this night, why do we only eat unleavened bread? And it goes on for four questions like that. And the answers kind of explain or tell the Passover story. But what we're going to do instead, we're going to go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus 12. So if you have your Bible or if you want to just read it there on the screen. I'm going to read verses 3 through 15. And again, this is from the Tree of Life version. It says, Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, that's the tenth day of the Hebrew month of Nisan, that's Palm Sunday. That's what on the Christian calendar you are remembering today. Each man is to take a lamb for his family, one lamb for the household. But if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor are to take one according to the number of the people. According to each person eating, you are to make your count for the lamb. And one reason why they were real particular in this and not getting too much is because they had to eat it all before morning. You couldn't leave none left over. But yet everybody still had to participate. So you couldn't have too little. You couldn't have too much. Your lamb is to be without blemish. Okay, we're going to go through this today, but I want you to think about Jesus, Yeshua, being the lamb of God. He's perfect without sin, without blemish. A year old lamb. So a, a young lamb. Jesus, Yeshua, he was young. He was only 33 when he was crucified. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You must watch over it until the 14th day of Nisan. Now on the biblical calendar, the 14th day of Nisan uh, was yesterday. Okay, that's when Passover actually started. So you must watch over it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight. So that's right at darkness. Now as time went on, there was millions of Jews and there was millions of lambs and they had to come to the temple to be slaughtered. So they started slaughtering them about 3 o'clock. And you, you had to. And you had to have all these priests 
uh, you know, on standby and working together, else you couldn't get all this done. You couldn't do it like on that first night of Passover where everybody, right when the sun went down below the trees, then everybody slaughtered their lamb. Verse 7, they are to take the blood. you got to plead the blood, as Pastor Carroll said. Take the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the crossbeam of your houses where they may eat or where they will eat. Verse 8, they are to eat the meat that night roasted over a fire with matzah, that's unleavened bread, and bitter herbs, that would be like uh, horseradish. They are to eat it. Verse 9, do not eat any of it raw or boiled with water, but only roasted with fire. Its head with its legs and its enters or entrails, I believe the King James says. In other words, you got to receive it all. You got to receive all of Jesus or none of all. Amen? Verse 10. So let nothing of it remain until morning. Whatever remains until the morning, you are to burn with fire. Verse 11. Also, you are to eat it this way, with your loins girded, have your belt on, have, ha, have your stuff, uh, you know, they would carry things on their belts. Have your loins girded, be ready to go. Your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. You are to eat it in haste. It is Adonai's Passover. Verse 12. For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals. And I will execute judgments against all the gods, little g, of Egypt. I am Adonai. The blood will be a sign for you. The blood's still a sign for us today. The blood of Yeshua. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So there will be no plague among you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a memorial for you. Do you know every time you partake of communion, you are remembering this? Every time. Communion is like a mini Passover Seder. This day is to be a memorial for you. You are to keep it as a feast to Adonai. Throughout your generations, you are to keep it as an internal ordinance. Verse 15. For seven days, you are to eat matzah, unleavened bread. But on the first day, you must remove hamets, that's the leaven, from your houses. We'll stop there. We'll go back to our booklet now. And we still do that for uh, symbolic spiritual reasons today. For example, I will not have any, I will not eat any leaven for the next seven days. No bread, no rolls. I know me and my wife, we got to go to uh, uh, Alcoa later this week, and we're wanting to stop at the Texas Roadhouse, and she's like, I don't know if I could take that or not uh, when they come and they offer you those rolls. But uh, it, it, it's doable. It makes you think constantly about the Word of God and what He says. Amen. Leaven, what does leaven, when you, when you leaven bread, when you leaven dough, what does it make the dough do? Rise. Puff up, in other words. What does sin make you do? That's the spiritualness of it. For everything in Scripture, there's always a physical and there's always a spiritual. And you hear people say, well, why do you need the physical anymore if you got the spiritual? Well, why do you need baptism? Why do you need the communion? It, that's all the physical of the picture of the spiritual. Amen? Okay, next, again, picture you sitting at a table at a Passover Seder. There's four cups in the Seder. In the Passover Seder, we drink four cups from the fruit of the vine or grape juice. Uh, the fruit of the vine is a symbol of joy and life. Each of the four cups reminds us of the first four I wills in Exodus chapter 6. And you see this in your booklet there. The first cup is called the cup of sanctification. It comes from Exodus 6 verse 6 where it says, I will bring you out. Sanctification. Remember it sets you apart, bringing you out. You're sanctified. The second cup, the cup of plagues, Exodus 6, 6, 
It says, I will deliver you from their bondage. That's what the plagues did. God made a way. He's a way maker. It took that tenth plague, but he is a way maker. The third cup, the cup of redemption. And a little bit later, I will explain this is actually the cup of communion, the cup of redemption. It comes from Exodus chapter 6, verse 6, where it says, I will redeem you. And then the fourth cup, the cup of praise, comes from Exodus 6, verse 7, where it says, I will take you to myself as a people. So now we're going to break down these cups for you. The first cup, again, the cup of sanctification. Through the exodus out of Egypt, God set apart, or again, sanctified the nation of Israel forever to be holy people unto him by the blood of the Lamb. 1 Peter 1.16 says, you are to be holy. And again, that word holy doesn't mean you are perfect, okay? We all fail, all of us. That word holy means you are to be different than the rest of the world. You are to be trying and striving, amen? You are to be holy because I am holy. Yeshua began his final Passover celebration, otherwise known as the Last Supper, in Luke 22, 17 through 18, where it says, Then, taking a cup of wine, he made the barakah. What's the barakah? It's the blessing. Remember I said a blessing for the Talit earlier? In uh, Messianic Judaism, we have a blessing for everything that we do. And a blessing is just giving thanks to God for what he has done for us. So Yeshua, he took uh, the cup and he gave the blessing and he said, Take this. And share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So he would lift up the cup. And I, I will say this blessing for you because this is a fairly common one. And most of our blessings we sing or we chant. Uh, it's just easier to remember. How many of you can, back in high school, you can remember a song, but you can't remember the poem you had to read uh, in class. So I'll sing this blessing here that's listed on your paper. It goes like this. Barukata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Bore Periha Gafen, Amen. And in English it is, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Then we come to the washing of the hands. How many of you have ever been to Israel? Or maybe you've ever been at a Passover Seder. They have a little cup, a little container, and it has two handles on it. Have you ever seen one of those? Okay, this part of the Seder is, sim is a symbolic act in imitation of the priest who had to wash his hands and his feet in the laver before he offered the sacrifices or entered into the holy place at the temple. You remember the temple scene and set up and they had the bronze laver outside before you go in, in through that first curtain. Not the uh, second curtain into the Holy of Holies, but that first curtain where you have the table of showbread, where you have the lamp stand, and where you have the altar of incense. Before he went into there, he had to wash his hands. And by the way, I encourage you to study on the temple because every single thing about that is about our salvation. You come to the door, it's Jesus. You come to the altar, he's our sacrifice. You come to the laver, you wash, you get baptized. I mean, everything about it is about our salvation. It was at this time during the Seder, during the Passover meal, that Yeshua washed the feet of his disciples in John 13, verse 5, and also 12 through 14. So we have, how we do this today, we have that cup with the two handles. And we take with your right hand and you grab the right handle and you wash. You set it down and you grab it with your left hand, the left handle, and you wash your other hand. Uh, that is... Now, typically, some satyrs, they have this set up at every table so all of you could participate. Or some just have it where the priest himself does it. Or not the priest, the uh, person leading the, uh, the satyr. Psalm 24, 3-4 through 4 says... 
Who may go up to the mountain of Adonai, the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. Next in the Passover Seder, we would come to the parsley or the karpos in Hebrew. The parsley reminds us of the hyssop used to place the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of Egypt. When we dip the karpos in salt water, we have a little bowl of salt water, and we dip the parsley into the salt water, and then we eat of it. We are reminded again of the tears shed in Egypt because of the suffering. Our tears from slavery to sin has been wiped away by Yeshua and replaced with tears of joy. Amen? And then you would say the blessing there. I'm not going to say that one for you. We'll move on. Next we come to the breaking of the middle matzah. In the Passover Seder, there's three pieces of matzah. Matzah is the unleavened bread. It's called the bread of affliction. How many of you have never seen what matzah looks like? You know what a cracker is. Matzah is like a big cracker. I mean, it's literally about, you know, that big. Big sheet. As big as this Bible or bigger. A little bit more square. We take three sheets of matzah. Now, why did they have matzah or unleavened bread in the Passover? Remember, they had to have their loins girded back in Exodus 12. Didn't have time to let the bread rise. They had to get out before Pharaoh changed his mind, which he eventually did. But God is in control. Even when the enemy chases after you, God's still in control. Matzah recalls the hasty flight from the Egyptian bondage when the Israelites' bread was not given significant time to rise. In this part of the Passover Seder, we would take, remember there's three sheets of matzah, we would take the middle matzah, we would remove it, and we would break it in two. Now this has a spiritualness to it. Listen, this one half of the broken matzah is called the afikoman, which has an awesome definition that I will explain later. And we wrap the afikoman in white cloth, and we hide it temporarily. Now I know I say on the booklet here I'll explain the afikoman later, but just... Let me go ahead and touch on that right now. Anytime as believers, when we think of three, we think of what? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So the Son's in the middle, right? We removed that middle matzah, the Son. What did we do to the middle matzah? We broke it. We took one half of it and we wrapped it in linen cloth and we hid it temporarily. The Son... Jesus, Yeshua, was broken on the cross and was taken down and wrapped in linen cloth and put away in the tomb temporarily. But hallelujah, he rose again on that third day. By the way, the word Afi Coleman, and this is why it's so important. Sorry, I keep hitting that microphone. This is why it's so important to have churches like mine because let me explain this what I'm teaching you here today is what every Jewish person has on Passover they literally have those three sheets but they don't get that it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit like we do they literally take the middle one that we see as Yeshua and they break it they do all this but their eyes are not open to it yet this is why congregations, churches like mine, is so important. Because last year about this time, we had a Jewish person, a Holocaust survivor, come to the olive tree. He did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. He, did not, he had not accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. But he felt comfortable enough, and he felt loved. He said he'd never felt that at any other church. And he stayed at the olive tree and continued to come week after week after week, even though every week I was preaching Jesus was the Messiah. He, he felt comfortable enough with the whole thing. And finally, one day he come up to me and he said, now it wasn't like you know what we've experienced a lot, the altar calls and, and the power. He finally just came up to me quietly one day and he said, Okay, yeah, 
I believe it now. And he accepted Jesus as his Lord and his Savior. So that's why this is so important. Amen? Continuing on. I've even forgotten where we're at. I think we're back over on the second cup, which is the cup of plagues. At this time in the Passover Seder, we would recall the ten plagues that came upon Egypt. God sent plagues one by one, yet with each plague, Pharaoh hardened his heart. The Egyptians, afflicted with discomfort, I'm sorry, the Egyptians became afflicted with discomfort and disease. Still, Pharaoh would not relent. With the tenth and most awful plague, God pierced through the hardness of Pharaoh's heart. So at this time, what we would do in the Seder, you would have, you would have already drunk one cup. Remember, you have four cups. You would have already drunk one. So you would take that second cup, and we would dip our finger in it ten times. You dip your finger, and you drop a drop on a napkin or on your plate. And for each one of those, you would name these ten plagues. Blood, frogs, lice, beast, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and death of the firstborn. You remember all those. And you might think, well, why remember those things? Those, those things were bad. That's how God brought you out. That's what God saved you from. He protected them as they were in Goshen. Amen? And then we would sing a song called Dianu, and we would say, Had God done no more than save us from Egypt or from slavery to sin, in our case, then Dianu, it would have been enough. In other words, what that song means, if God hadn't have blessed me with a beautiful home, if he hadn't have blessed me with a, with a vehicle, if he hadn't have blessed me with a, a, a job, if he'd only saved my soul from hell, Dianu, it would have been enough. Amen? We are so, so blessed here in America. And uh, I, again, I think this song matches up perfectly with your praise and worship this morning. Uh, I would sing the song for you, but you get my point. So we will move on. Next we have the roasted bone, or the zaroa. Zaroa literally means the arm of God, the arm of God reaching down to save you. The roasted bone represents the lamb that was sacrificed for the Passover Seder. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says that Yeshua is our Passover lamb. That's exactly how it's worded in the TLV. I think the English Standard Version words it that way as well. Yeshua, Jesus, was called the Lamb of God in John chapter 1, verse 29. You remember John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In the book of Revelation, now get this, in the book of Revelation, Yeshua is referred to as the Lamb 29 times. 29 times. The Lamb had to be unblemished. Remember we read that earlier, just like Yeshua was unblemished. The bone reminds us that during the crucifixion, not one bone of Yeshua was broken. That Lamb couldn't have no bones broken. It had to be perfect. It had to be unblemished. We are no longer to eat lamb on the Passover Seder plate for two reasons. For two reasons, we do not eat lamb on the Seder plate anymore. One, there is no temple to sacrifice the lamb. But two, Yeshua is our Passover lamb. Amen? And I'll throw a third one in there just for fun. The matzah represents Yeshua's body. He even says that. This is my body broken for you. So that's why we don't eat lamb. We still have the bone on the plate to remind us, but there's no lamb meat. Next we come on your Seder plate. And again, this is all on your plate as well. I'm sorry I forgot to mention all that earlier. But if you look on the plate, you see all these things. Next we come to the roasted egg. The roasted egg is a traditional symbol. Now I know that it represents life, it represents resurrection, but I'm going to teach you why the Jewish people put this on the plate, okay? 
The roasted egg is a traditional symbol that represents the sacrifices that was made during the week-long Feast of Unleavened Bread. Remember I told you you had to clean out your homes of leaven, of all bread products. For seven days you eat unleavened bread. And they would have special sacrifices made at the temple during that week-long celebration. The roasted egg was not commanded in the Bible for Passover, but was added after the first temple was destroyed during the Babylonian exile. So during the time of Daniel, this was before the time of Jesus when this egg was added uh, into the Seder celebration. During this time, they could no longer make sacrifices. So what does that have to do with the egg? The egg was added to symbolize mourning due to the loss of the temple and the sacrificial system. But we no longer mourn because Yeshua is our sacrifice and our body is the temple of God. So some choose to no longer use the egg uh, on, on the Seder plate, but some still do in order to recognize that. Did you know that still to this day, uh, the Jewish people at a funeral in times of mourning, they eat boiled eggs. Did you know that? Now, of course, again, we as Christians, we as believers, we know that uh, uh, egg represents resurrection and new life, right? Now we come back to that matzah. Remember we talked about the three sheets of matzah earlier? Now we come back to that. For at least 1,000 years before Yeshua, Jesus, was born, the sages, which is the ancient rabbis, instructed us to take three sheets of matzah and wrap them in linen. Why did they pick three? Again, they didn't know Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, this was even before Yeshua had even came. Why did they pick three? No one really knows. But again, we who are followers of Yeshua know that it represents the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 5, 8, Therefore let us celebrate the feast, referring to Passover and leavened bread, not with the old hamets or the old leaven, with the hamets of malice or leaven of malice and wickedness. Remember, leaven represents sin. But with unleavened bread, the matzah or the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, the most important leaven for you to remove during this time is the sin in your life. That's the most important leaven. There's the spiritual side of this. Uh, during this week, it's a time of repentance. How many of you have heard of spring cleaning? Guess where it came from? Cleaning out your house of the leaven. I mean, they literally go through and make sure the house is completely clean of all traces of bread crumbs. And, and the, a lot of them even swap out their dishes. A lot of Orthodox, very strict uh, religious Jews, they swap out their dishes. Some of them I've seen on a Facebook this week, they will put like some kind of plastic covering over their countertops and so on. They make sure that n they do not encounter any leaven during this time. They have some uh, uh, tradition that they do where the son or the, the fathers get the children and they go and they, they sweep up a little bit of the leaven and then they take it out and they burn it. Well, boy, that can relate to us because leaven is sin. And what happens at the end to all those who have chose to stay and live in sin? And at this time, they would lift up the matzah. And I'll say this blessing for you because this is a beautiful one to sing. It goes like this. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min HaAretz Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And again, Jesus would have known some type of blessings like this. We don't know if it was exactly word for word this, but it would have been something similar to this because he blessed the bread and he blessed the, the cup. Moving along, now we come to the uh, horseradish. This is the most fun part of the Seder. 
when you get to see the people's face when they eat this horseradish. Last night we had some fresh, homegrown, homemade horseradish, and it was hot. Even for me, I like horseradish, but this was hot. And if you've never ate horseradish, it's different from hot sauce. Uh, you know, hot sauce, you can feel it going down. Uh, it's hot in your mouth. Horseradish, it goes up in, in your nose, and you make the strangest face <laughs> whenever you eat that. Uh, it, it clears your sinuses very well. But it's symbolic, though, and I'll point that out. The maror, or horseradish, symbolizes the bitterness of life in Egypt and the bitterness of slavery. Exodus 1, 13 through 14 says, they worked them harshly, referring to the Egyptians working the Israelites harsh, harshly. Verse 14 says, and made their lives bitter with hard labor. Some traditions, on, you might see on your Seder plate maybe a, another bitter herb there, referring to the lettuce, some traditions have a second bitter herb of lettuce. I personally don't think lettuce is bitter myself, so I prefer to go with the horseradish. Now, there is a way, though, you can make the lettuce bitter from what I hear. Maybe if you leave it out in the field a little too long or something like that, uh, but I prefer the horseradish. So as you would eat the horseradish, you would remember the bitterness of your old life to the slavery of sin. How many of you have lived? We've all, to a certain extent, lived in that life, but some more than others. And that's what you would remember here. But you would also remember how Yeshua, Jesus, set you free. Amen? Now, I'll skip this blessing here. We're going to move on to the apples and the nuts, called the haroset in Hebrew. Imagine some, an apple, and it's diced up. And then you sprinkle some chopped nuts on it. Uh, I believe you have some like uh, grape juice or wine mixed in with it and some cinnamon. It is very good. So you had the bitterness part where you remember the bitterness. Now you're going to remember the sweetness. Now you're going to remember the victory. The haroset is the traditional reminder of the hard labor which the Israelites endured in Egypt while making their own mortar for bricks. Some haros, it looks like it's squished a little bit more. I, I personally prefer where you can see the apple chunks. Uh, but you know how they had to make their mortar, right? They had big old dugout holes like swimming pools, and they would have water poured in it, and they would throw mud in there, and they would throw straw, and they would stomp on it, and they would make mortar for their bricks. And the haros, it reminds us of how they had to do that. As believers in Yeshua, the Horoset now reminds us we do not have to labor for our salvation. Can I get an amen for that? I'm very thankful for that. Uh, we would all fall short. Our salvation is by God's grace through faith. I love right here behind me what you have. Uh, that is exactly right. Uh, we're only saved through God's grace. But just because you are saved, though, through God's grace doesn't mean you can go out and do whatever you want to in the world, right? We have a standard of living that God gives to us in His Word. And, of course, you see that in Ephesians 2.8. Yeshua, Jesus, has done all the work required for us. And then there's another Hebrew blessing that you would say as you eat the haroset. Okay, we're coming down to the final page now. I told Pastor uh, Carol I'd take about an hour. I don't know how I'm doing on my time, but I'm just trying to let the Holy Spirit lead me and guide me. We have an extra cup. You know, I told you there's four cups, right? Well, there's an extra one on there as well. Built into the Passover is an understanding that there's more to the celebration than an acknowledgement of the past. There's... There's uh, the recognition that the redemption of the Israelites from the physical bondage of Egypt is a picture of the ultimate redemption which would come through Yeshua. Malachi 3.1 says, Behold, I am sending my messenger, 
and he will clear the way before me. Suddenly he will come to his temple, the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant, the one whom you desire. Yeshua said that John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah. That, that's referring to, in Malachi, Elijah. Remember they would ask John the Baptist, Are you Elijah? Are you the one that is coming to announce? Are, are, are you Elijah that has come back to announce the coming of the Messiah? And John would say, No, no, I, I'm not Elijah. But Yeshua said that John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah, right? We are to also have that spirit of Elijah, that spirit of John the Baptist that says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So Yeshua said that John the Baptist had that spirit of Elijah when he said in Matthew eleven fourteen, If you are willing to accept it, he is, referring to John the Baptist, he is Eliyahu, he is Elijah. That's from the complete Jewish Bible. So this extra cup called the cup of Elijah, the cup of Eliyahu, is for the spirit of Elijah that paved the way for Yeshua's, for Jesus' first coming, and will also pave the way for Yeshua's second coming in the future. How many of you know about the two witnesses in the book of Revelation? Now, there's different interpretations on who those two is going to be, but most people feel that it's Moses and Elijah. Uh, so this would fit this narrative perfectly, right? And what we do, again, imagine a, a table set up and you were all sitting there. There would be an extra seat, an empty seat. And it would have a cup sitting there with also a Seder plate. That would be for Elijah. And you always send a child back to the door to open the door to see if Elijah's coming. Uh, amazing enough, last night we sent our children back to the door and one of them came back in and he said, oh, my name is Elijah. So yes, uh, we found Elijah. So uh, uh, we always have to make the, uh, the Passover Seder and all that we do about the children. You know, they are our future. Even the, uh, the Offie Coleman, that hidden bread that we're getting ready to talk about next, at the Seder we hide it and then the child goes and finds it and the child gets a reward. So children, you got to tell your parents to have a Seder so you can have all this fun. Next in the Passover Seder, we go back to that Afi Coleman, that hidden, broken middle piece of matzah that was uh, hidden away for a moment. The Afi Coleman that was broken literally means I came or the coming one. Doesn't that sound like Yeshua? It is the bread of the communion. Every time you partake of communion, you are partaking of the Afi Coleman. And it symbolizes the ultimate Passover sacrifice, Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, who gave his body on the cross for the payment of our sins. The Afi Coleman, that broken middle piece of matzah, is a clear picture of Yeshua's body being pierced bruised and striped. Okay, picture that cracker. The cracker has some dark brown on it, right? Looks like it's bruised. It's got holes in it, right? It's been pierced. That was Yeshua's body. That's exactly what a piece of matzah looks like. And if I had some candles right here, I would hold the matzah in front of it and show you all those piercings. Being wrapped in a white cloth and hidden away is a symbol of the burial and resurrection of Yeshua in Matthew 27, 59 through 60. In John 6, 48, Yeshua says that he is the bread of life. Luke twenty two nineteen. 19, this is in reference to the Last Supper here. Says, taking a piece of matzah, a piece of unleavened bread, he made the barakah, he made that blessing that we said uh, earlier when I, uh, I sang Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. He made the barakah, he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, This is my body, which is being given for you. Do this in memory of me. Every time you partake of communion, you are remembering that Passover. And then here you have another blessing that we will uh, skip over. 
for the sake of time. We have two cups left. The third cup, the cup of redemption. The cup of redemption is the cup of communion. Just like I told you, the Afi Coleman, that broken middle matzah is the bread of communion. This third cup is the cup of communion. It symbolizes God's promise of redemption from slavery of sin. It was the cup Yeshua raised after supper in Luke 22, 20, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Just as the blood of the Lamb brought salvation in Egypt, so it is only the atoning blood of Messiah Yeshua that can provide salvation for us. Amen? They marked, the Israelites marked the doorpost of their homes with the blood of the Lamb so that the death angel would pass over them. Yeshua's blood is now on the doorpost of our hearts if you are a believer and if you have accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, giving us eternal, everlasting life with the Lord and causing that final death angel to pass over us. And again, we have a blessing there for the third cup. As we draw to an end, we come to the fourth cup. And the fourth cup kind of changes gears a little bit. Okay, you've got today on the Christian calendar is Palm Sunday. Friday is Good Friday. That is literally coincides with the Passover. Jesus Yeshua was crucified on a Friday. That was the beginning of Passover. What time of day was Jesus crucified on? Or, I'm sorry, let me back up. What time of day did he give up his spirit? Three o'clock. At three o'clock, the priest was over at the temple, and he sacrificed the first lamb, and then he, the priest said these words, It is finished. At three o'clock, when Yeshua was on the cross and he gave up his spirit, what did he say? It is finished. And, and again, backing up, Jesus, Yeshua, rode in on that donkey on the 10th day of Nisan when they were taking in their Passover lambs. Everything he did, he's so detailed. He fulfilled, not, not doing away with all this, but he fulfilled all this, bringing it to its full meaning. Right? You know, I, I, people tell me, yes, yes, there is no temple. Yes, the sacrifices are, uh, uh, we no longer do those. Yeshua, Jesus is our sacrifice. But people tell me all the time that that Old Testament is done away with. If it's done away with, then there's no law. We can do whatever we want to. There's no sin. Why, need, why even need Jesus, Yeshua, right? It's not done away with. We, we, we see, you know, we believe in healing. We believe in the anointing oil. We see that in uh, Elisha is what we call him in Hebrew, but Elisha uh, in English. We see that with him, with the miracle of the oil. Uh, and, and then also with the healing of the boy who had died. So you see all that. There's really nothing brand spanking new in the New Testament that was not already laid out in the old. It all goes together like a hand in a glove. So, this fourth cup, we've transitioned, as I was saying earlier, from Good Friday and the crucifixion, now we've transitioned to Sunday when Christians celebrate the resurrection. This fourth cup is the cup of praise. With the cup of praise, we lift up our cups for the final time and we give praise to God. With this cup, we praise God for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And then you have another blessing there that we say. But did you know, again, there's nothing new did you know that when he rose from the grave, that was also a feast that was mentioned back in the Old Testament? It was the Feast of First Fruits. And what did Paul 
say about Yeshua, about Jesus. I believe it's in 1 Corinthians. He said he is the first fruits of the resurrection. What did, what did uh, Jesus tell Mary, not his mother Mary, but the other Mary, what did he tell her when she came after he had just rose from the grave and she wanted to grab hold of him? What did he tell her? Don't grab hold of me. I've not yet went to the Father. Why did he have to go to the Father? Because just in a moment, that Sunday morning, that first day of the week, over in the temple, the priest was getting ready to offer up the first fruits sacrifice, the first fruits wave offering. And Yeshua wanted to be in heaven in front of the Father and said, I am the first fruits of the resurrection. It all had to happen in a timely manner, all at the right time. They put, let me back up a little bit to Good Friday. They crucified Jesus. He, he, he said, it is finished right at 3 o'clock when the priest said it is finished. But then they went to put him in the grave. Not only did they wrap him in the white linen cloth, but they put the unleavened, sinless Son of God in the grave at the very time that unleavened bread was starting. The very time. It all coincides together. And then, then Jewish people, at the start of the Feast of First Fruits, which again was resurrection, they start counting 50 days to Pentecost. And during those 50 days, as they count, you go back in the, uh, uh, in the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, God provided for them manna, He provided for them meat, He provided for them uh, water. He provided for them judicial advice through Jethro. He was providing for them. Okay, look back in the New Testament now. During those 50 days after Yeshua's resurrection until that uh, Pentecost, uh, Jesus walked with the two men on the road to Emmaus and he gave them that Bible lesson. Then he went back and he taught the disciples. He, he, he talked to Thomas. He said, look here, do you believe in me now? And he continued to walk with them and teach them and show them these things. And then on the 40th day, he rose to heaven. And then on the 50th day, again, we think that's the first Pentecost. Nope, you go back into Leviticus chapter 23 where it lists all the feasts. And there you have the feast, what is called Shavuot. And on that feast, it is believed, it is calculated by both Christian scholars and Jewish scholars. On that feast of Shavuot, what later became known as Pentecost in Greek, God gave them the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. He gave them His, his uh, instructions for life. Here's how I want you to live. Well, guess what? Skipping now to Acts chapter 2 on that day of Pentecost, he gave us that Holy Spirit that can help us walk in those commandments, who wrote those commandments on our heart. Amen? I know I'm preaching way off subject here, but I'm just trying to tie a bunch of stuff in. When I see people take notes, I preach even more. <laughs> those of you who, who's ever visited uh, the olive tree, you know when I see a visitor, I don't know if Pastor Carroll's like this or not, but I get into like teaching mode and I want to, you're like an empty vessel and I want to pour you full. Uh, so at the end of every Seder, it is tradition that we say next year in Jerusalem. Uh, but I like to say next year in New Jerusalem because it talks about that New Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 21 where it says, I, referring to John, uh, John the Apostle, John the Disciple, I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Did you know that everything God told Moses to make in, uh, in forming the temple and the tabernacle, did you know that all that stuff's in heaven? Did you know there's a temple in heaven? Did you know that there's that lamp stand that he told uh, Moses to build out of solid gold? God was just sitting there looking at his own lamp stand. He was telling Moses, build it like this, build it like that. Everything is in heaven, and it's all going to come down one day in that new Jerusalem, and we're all going to get to see it. Amen? Before I close, if it's okay with uh, Pastor uh, Carol, I'd like to bless you. And by the way, you know what makes, you know what makes a great pastor? And me and uh, Pastor Carol both have this. You have to have a wife named Kim. That's what makes a great pastor right there. Me and you both have that. Uh, uh, 
unfortunately, my Kim was unable to be here with me today. She's at home getting ready for the other Passover Seder this afternoon. But I want to bless you the way God told uh, Aaron and Moses to bless the people of Israel. Uh, he gave them this blessing in Numbers chapter 6. I believe it's verses 24 through 26. And I want to bless you like we do in Hebrew, but we chant it, we sing it. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the book of Psalms? It's songs. God's word is meant to be sung. Amen? So if you would please stand. And again, I want to bless you in the traditional Jewish way. Adonai Vayishmareka Yaher Adonai Penaveleka Vikuneka Yisa Adonai Penaveleka Vayasim Lika Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. I pray this in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. Amen and amen. By the way, you know what that means to lift up his countenance upon you? Imagine you're a father and you take your baby and you lift him up. That's what that means. May God lift, lift up. He's lifting up his countenance upon you, his child that he's holding in his hands. Amen. Thank you all for having me today. To, to God be all the glory, amen, this morning, amen. Praise God. So thankful, amen, for Pastor Robert Ritchie to be here with us this morning, amen, to take his day to come and be with us and to expound the word, amen, and to expound some things and give us a little bit of knowledge, amen, and I'm so thankful for that. Praise God. Amen. Don't forget, Sister Kim needs to meet with all the ladies just real quick. If you don't care, ladies, if you'll just gather up here on the front. Amen. Uh, she'll take care of that quick meeting with you all. Amen. Don't forget tonight, amen, 6 o'clock, service back tonight. Amen. Come 530 for a time of prayer. Amen. And so please come. Be here ready to praise, ready to worship, ready to seek God's face. Amen. And just to lift up holy hands. Amen. And to worship Him tonight. Amen. Praise God. Uh, so praise God. Let's, uh, uh, br Brother Robert, he's already, uh, Pastor Robert's already uh, blessed us. Amen. So, so let's Let's leave, amen, with that blessing upon our hearts and know that God is for us, amen. Praise God. Go in peace, amen. And ladies, come and meet with Sister Kim this morning. God bless you. Love you all.